Assalamu alaikum. 6 p.m. This is Radio Pakistan. First, the headlines. Prime Minister says socio-economic development of Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan is amongst the foremost priorities of the government. Foreign Minister has appreciated the bold Malaysian stance against Indian atrocities in occupied Kashmir. Minister for Power and Petroleum Divisions says Pakistan's energy sector offers around $60 billion market in renewable energy generation transmission and distribution system. <music> Taliban have expressed their readiness to restart peace talks with the United States. <music> Japan and South Korea will hold trade talks next month in Tokyo. On the first day of second test against Pakistan at Adelaide, Australia in the first innings was 302 for one at stunts today. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister the socio-economic development of Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan is amongst the foremost priorities of the government. He was talking to the Minister for Kashmir Affairs and Gilgit Baltistan, Ali Amin Khan Gandapur, in Islamabad today. On the occasion, the Prime Minister was briefed about the progress on developmental projects in AJK and Gilgit Baltistan. Imran Khan expressed satisfaction over the progress on the development projects. Malaysian Deputy Foreign Minister Datuk Faira Haji Marzuki bin Haji Yahya called on Prime Minister Imran Khan in Islamabad today. Foreign Minister Makhdoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi was also present during the meeting. Malaysian Deputy Foreign Minister Datuk Waira Haji Marzuki bin Haji Yahya called on Foreign Minister Shah Mahmoud Qureshi in Islamabad today and discussed bilateral relations and matters of mutual interest. The Foreign Minister apprised the Malaysian Deputy Foreign Minister about the blatant human rights violations in occupied Kashmir. Shah Mahmoud Qureshi appreciated the bold stance of Malaysia against Indian atrocities in occupied Kashmir. He said, we are thankful to Malaysia for fully supporting Pakistan's stance on Jammu and Kashmir dispute. The Malaysian Deputy Foreign Minister apprised Shah Mahmood Qureshi about the upcoming Kuala Lumpur conference. Minister for Power and Petroleum Divisions, Umar Ayub Khan, has said Pakistan's energy sector offers around its renewable energy generation transmission and distribution system. Talking to German Ambassador Bernard Shalangek in Islamabad today, he said petroleum subsector offers huge oil and gas exploration opportunities for around 40 new sites for which auction will be conducted next month. The ambassador was informed that the government is ready to auction around 35 offshore and 10 onshore sites for exploration from the next month. The minister said the government has formulated a 25 years generation plan alongside transmission plan for commissioning new electricity projects in the country. Omar Ayub Khan said the circular debt has been brought down from 39 billion to 10 billion rupees per month. Minister for Planning and Development Asad Umar has said the government is targeting the groundbreaking of first special economic zone under China-Pakistan economic corridor by the end of the next month. In a tweet today, he expressed the determination to open more socio-economic zones within current fiscal year. He said under the first phase, one each special economic zone is being established in Sindh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab. Asad Umar said the government is focusing on the development of socio-economic zones under the CPEC to accelerate industrialization and job creation. Minister of State for Narcotics Control and Saffron Shahriar Khan Afridi has urged Christian scholars to raise their voice for 8 million Kashmiris who have been caged in the biggest human prison ever by India's fascist regime. He was talking to a delegation from the Church of Jesus Christ of Later Day Saints in Islamabad today. Shariara Fridi said Christian leadership needs to build pressure over the Modi government to lift siege in Kashmir, where around one million Indian security officials are committing worst crimes against humanity. 
Pakistan Air Force today conducted a command level operation exercise with participation of all operational bases across three regional commands. The PAF aircraft participated in the massive concurrent exercise to practice short notice offensive employment concept involving fighter aircraft, first multipliers and special forces. The concept validates the PAF's options for offensive employment of its various capabilities. This is Radio Pakistan. Pakistan and Iran have decided to further boost trade activities between the two countries. The understanding was reached during a two-day meeting of Joint Border Trade Committee of Pakistan and Iran in Zayedan. A 24-member Pakistani delegation led by Collector of Pakistan Customs attended the meeting to discuss trade activities between two neighboring countries. Pakistan has been re-elected to the Executive Council of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. The election of the world's foremost chemical weapons watchdog for the term 2020-2022 till 2022 took place at the annual conference of the state's parties in The Hague, Netherlands. Permanent representative to the OPCW, Shujaat Ali Rathor, represented Pakistan at the Executive Council. The re-election of the Pakistan in the 41-member Executive Council is a testament of Pakistan's proactive role at the OPCW. It also reaffirms the confidence of the member states in Pakistan's ability to provide effective leadership and impetus to the world of the OPCW. President Arif Alvi has said Pakistan will never condone the blatant human rights violation in Indian-occupied Kashmir at the hands of fascist Indian regime and will always stand by its Kashmiri brethren. He was talking to Ambassador-designate of Pakistan to Oman, K.K. Ahsan, who called on him in Islamabad today. The president underscores that all high commissioners, ambassadors, must highlight the true perspective of Kashmir issue and Indian oppression. The Independent Permanent Human Rights Commission of OIC has strongly condemned the continued human rights violations in occupied Kashmir. At its session in Jeddah, the commission noted that the Indian government, in an attempt to quell the Kashmiris' struggle for the right to self-determination, has resorted to relentless political, economic and communication blockade in occupied territory. Taliban have expressed their readiness to restart peace talks with the United States. Talking to Reuters news agency, spokesman of Taliban Zabiullah Mujahid said that talks will be resumed from the stage where it stopped. Earlier talking to newsmen during his brief visit to Afghanistan, President Donald Trump had said that Taliban want to make a deal and he believed they would agree to a ceasefire. Japan and South Korea have agreed to hold official level trade talks next month in Tokyo. In a statement, South Korea's Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy said the two sides will exchange their domestic and external situations regarding export control. In a further sign of an easing of tensions, South Korea has also agreed to stick to an intelligence sharing deal with Japan. Sudan has repealed a restrictive public order law that controlled how women acted and dressed in public. Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, in a tweet, paid tribute to women who have endured the atrocities that resulted from the implementation of this law. The country's transitional authorities have dissolved the party of former President Omar al-Bashir. On the second day of second test match against Pakistan at Adelaide, Australia in the first innings was 302 for one at stumps today. David Warner with 166 and Manus Labuschagne with 126 runs were at the crease. Australia led the two match series by 1-0. And finally, the weather. Mainly dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while cold in northern areas during the next 24 hours. However, fog is likely to prevail in few plain areas of Punjab and Upper Sands during the morning. 
And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website, radio.goe.pk, and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com slash Radio Pakistan News Official.